precinct and they were released the following day. Um, it looks like we're on that path here again tonight. I'll go through all the preliminary details in a moment, but the most important details are that we have two police officers that are shot. We expect them to make a recovery. They're in stable condition. They're in good spirits here. I'll let the, the mayor go through uh, some facts and then I'll walk you through what we know. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you to everyone at St. Barnabas Hospital. First of all, they've been outstanding supporting our officers and thank you to those who represent this area i want to thank congress member richie torres uh, assembly member jose rivera and council member oswald phillies for being here thank you for your support uh, everyone we saw something in visiting these officers uh, extraordinary courage on display tonight uh, we've looked at the video. We saw officers doing their job protecting the people of the city with incredible bravery. And then in the visit to their hospital room, two people of just extraordinary spirit, uh, officers who are in this work because they want to protect people, they want to save lives. They were not thinking about themselves. Each of them had had bullet wounds. All they could talk about was their commitment to keeping people safe and why they came on this job and why they believe in it. It was incredibly inspiring. I just want to give thanks. You know, in a few hours, Thanksgiving begins. I want to give thanks for these officers. I want to give thanks for all the men and women of the NYPD who protect us. I want to give thanks that these two, thank God, are okay. And it looks like they'll make a full recovery. And we all need to count our blessings right now that two good young people who devoted themselves to all of us are going to come through okay. We also got to recognize there are too many guns out there. So another example of a gun from out of state comes into our city, hurts a New Yorker. This is something we've got to deal with in a whole different way. But in the meantime, thank God that there is one more shooter off the streets because of the bravery of these just absolutely extraordinary officers. You'll get to know them in the days ahead. But God bless them. We are blessed to have them in our police force. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So again, I'll remind you, it's a very fluid investigation. These facts are preliminary, but here is what we know at this point in time. Within the confines of the 48th Precinct at 2405 Beaumont Avenue, a little after 8 p.m. tonight, a member of the community, what we asked them to do, got involved, called 911, giving a pretty detailed description of an individual stating that that individual was at this location and had a firearm. You have police officers in uniform from the 48th Precinct that respond. Everything is captured on body camera. As they're walking up, they're discussing tactically how they will approach. And they immediately encounter this individual who's sitting on the front stoop of the building. Within seconds, they are in a gun battle. You have the female police officer that has approximately one year with the force is immediately struck in the right arm in this section right here. She eventually is shot twice in that area. She returns fire, we believe, five times, striking the assailant. Her partner, when they immediately approach the individual before the shots are fired, gives verbal instructions to take his hands out of his pocket, and immediately the gun comes out and the shots are st start. He's struggling with the individual, wrestling to the individual to the ground. From beginning to end, it lasts probably about two or three seconds. We have the perpetrator who was struck, we believe, three times. He went into surgery in this very same hospital. He's out of surgery, and we believe he is going to survive. We have the female officer that is struck twice in the upper right arm, as the mayor said. Uh, I can't believe the good spirit she is in. Um, incredible woman. Rodney, you have a picture of the firearm that was recovered at the scene. It's a firearm. What we know about this firearm is that it was reported stolen last year in Georgia. Obviously made its way, as many, far too many guns do, up into New York City and it causing carnage on the streets. Our second police officer, an eight-year veteran, and I should mention that the first officer, military veteran as well, currently serving in the U.S. Air Force Reserves, I believe. 
Our second officer is struck. Here's his duty shirt. Here's the bullet hole that enters in his right armpit area. And he's sitting in the hospital bed right now. The bullet comes out his left chest within inches, obviously, of, of a much different outcome. What we know about the individual is, is that he is a career criminal with far too many arrests, still on the streets of New York City, as we've seen far too many times. And I would point out, it would appear to me at this point that the community is doing their job by calling the police. We have two incredibly brave police officers doing their job and not complaining a bit right now as they're laying recovering in a hospital bed, eager to get back to work and loving what they do serving the people in New York City. It's time for the rest of the system to do its job and make the streets as safe as they can be. I'm going to turn it over to Pat Lynch, and then I'll take questions. You know, today what we witnessed once again, first off, we've started a holiday tradition. Unfortunately, the holiday tradition is spending Thanksgiving in an emergency room next to a bed of a police officer that was shot again. Remember last time we were also there on Christmas Eve. It has to stop. Yes, we saw police officers do their job heroically. We saw police officers that cared about each other first. How's my partner? And then rendered aid to the perp that tried to kill them. Yes, there's too many guns on the street, but we've lost the element of surprise. The problem is, yes, there's guns on the street, but perps aren't afraid to carry them. They're not afraid to put it in their belt, put it in their pocket, and pull it out on a police officer. That's the problem. It has to be recognized. We have to correct the political mistakes that were made in the past so we stop losing police officers and we stop spending the holidays praying for their recovery. Take some questions. Can you clarify the chronology? The uh, male officer, he had told this person to take his hands out of the pockets before his partner was shot, or was that after his partner? And, and so they turn a corner. They walk up to approach the front of the building. It's a building with three or four steps, and there's a front gate. As they walk up, they see the individual that fits the description of the 9-11 caller to a T. Um, as the male officer opens the front gate, he's speaking to the individual, and he immediately says, can you take your hands out of your pockets? And as he takes a step towards him, the individual stands up, the gun comes out, and the shots are fired. It all happens within a second. And he shot before his partner is? Unknown at this point in time. It appears from the video that the female, I, I believe, as the gun comes out, but we'll have to slow this down and really dissect it with crime scene. It appears that that first shot strikes the female officer. You can see her flinch on the video. And then she immediately returns fire. We, we believe we have five shots fired by the female officer and four fired by the perpetrator's gun with no shots fired by the male officer. And that makes sense as you watch the video because he was engaged hand to hand trying to subdue the individual. What strikes you as you watch that video is the speed in which it happens and the no regard for human life. You have two New York City police officers at 8 o'clock in the evening on Thanksgiving Eve walking up to an individual in uniform on a, on a Bronx street. And immediately that individual takes out a gun and starts shooting. If that doesn't tell you we have to take a second look, there is no fear on the streets right now. And we can take guns off the streets and fill up truckloads. Until we start putting some of these individuals in jail, we're going to have a tragedy. We had a 13-year-old shot yesterday. It was the same story. Any other questions? You mentioned priors. Are any of those priors for gun arrests or unrelated? We'll, we'll get to the, the arrests. We have to dissect which ones, of course, are sealed and which aren't sealed and all of that normal. It, it is the exact same pattern that we've been speaking about for the last several years. Many, many arrests of multitude of offenses, and the individual is sitting on the streets of the Bronx, terrorizing the community. Again, this started with a member of the community doing exactly what they should do, picking up the phone, getting involved, calling 911. 
and saying, please come, there's a guy here with a gun. Any other questions? Are you releasing the names of the officers and the person? No, we're not at this time. When are they expected to get out of the hospital? Um, the, f the female police officer, I, I would say, will be getting out. The male is a little uncertain right now due to the, again, he was shot in the right armpit. It came out his front chest, left side. And, and there's just some concern about make sure everything is good before we rush things. We want to make sure he's safe above all else. So she tomorrow, you think? I think that's reasonable, but we'll follow up with you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Happy you. Thanksgiving. Thank you.